Oh, hello there. <laughs> Trevor here from Double Bill Movies. So, I thought I'd do a very slightly different review. Um, slightly different Double Bill review. So, not a remake and not um, an original, but two films that are really sort of classic uh, British made. One of them is definitely a British film. One of them is a British made film. And, uh, but they do both star Sean Pertwee. So, if you saw my unboxing of it the other day, um, the other night, after doing the unboxing, I decided to watch my 4K, well, my Blu-ray of Dog Sock. Oh, that's the DVD. Dog Soldiers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, classic film. Um, as I said in that review, the last official film to give me a, a proper nightmare. Uh, again, not a nightmare where I had visuals, but I literally sat bob upright, scared. Anyway, um, what a stunning film. What a stunning transformation um, from this DVD to what I imagine the 4K will look like. Uh, so obviously I watched the Blu-ray, but um, this Blu-ray in particular would have been manufactured from the same 4K master that the UHD disc is made. Um, so obviously it's just encoded differently. Um, the colour palette will look ever so slightly different. I don't think, well, there was not any kind of blue tint applied to it. Um, I didn't see any hint of that uh, watching it on my TV. Um, but the reason that obviously the colour palette will be slightly different is because in 4K there's way more colours available. So the colour changes and variations behave very differently to what they will when they're restricted like they will be on the Blu-ray. Um, and again, on the DVD, obviously this has not come from a 4K master. Um, this is literally just a sort of digitised version of the film. Um, and then encoded for DVD but um, the colour palette uh, isn't far off the Blu-ray and I imagine um, the 4K there's a hell of a lot more colours especially in um, when they first realised that uh, something's going on and um, they're starting to get chased by the werewolves in the daylight in the forest um, there's a lot more colours on this than this um so the film was shot on 16 mil um and if you've watched it recently if you've got this and you've watched it and, and you've seen um certain aspects of it being really grainy um then that is why uh the the lower light areas of the picture will show a lot of grain um but that's just the film stock that was used uh, but for the most part of it, there's very little grain visible at all. So the 4K scan has done an incredible job at um, essentially the higher the resolution, the smaller the grain will be. Um, so it's still there. It's, it's not been DNR'd or anything. They haven't wiped it clean. Uh, I certainly didn't notice anything like that had been done to it because it didn't look waxy. It just looked totally natural to me. Um, but I just noticed in some areas... Um, that the grain was really quite heavy and um, in a little text message conversation I was having with uh, Mr John Clancy he reminded me that it was shot in 16 mil um, so yeah um, right at the beginning the um, or, or the beginning of the shots in Scotland uh, a lot of the sky is very very grainy that would just be I think um, second unit doing those flying shots uh, rather than uh, the first unit. Um, and you may notice in lots of films actually that you'll get some scenes, uh, the film looks completely different to the main scenes. Um, and that's for some reason the difference between second unit and first unit. Um, I can't believe it's different film stock. I'm not sure why that is. So any of you out there, if you know and understand this filming process, um, then please, yeah, let me know, inform us. Um, so, yeah, like I said, didn't have a nightmare, thankfully. <laughs> Got away with that one. 
Um, but the werewolves still looked absolutely fantastic. Um, and they looked scarier in the slightly darker scenes when they're more of a silhouette um, than when they're in full frame and they're, they're fully lit. Um, there was, uh, you know, a couple of really good uses of the surround sound channels. Um, there's, because it's a cottage and literally um, you can see the back door from the front door and vice versa, uh, at one point the, the cottage is surrounded and um, the werewolves are trying to get in both doors and, um, oh, I forget the character's name, uh, but uh, he's right in, in between them and he's like, which door do I look at? And he's, um, but the sound behind me and in front of me, behind me, in front of me, um, was incredible. Um, I did note that uh, most of the sound appeared to be from on set. Um, so these would have been the days, I mean, this still happens, but these would have been the days where the director would call quiet on set and everyone around would have to be as quiet as possible so the actors can do their thing and the, the, boomer, oper the boomer operator can capture uh, all the dialogue and the various sounds that are going on. Um, now, I will do... Uh, a separate video at some point on movie sound um, and uh, you'll be quite surprised those of you who don't know um, how many layers and different aspects to the film soundtrack um, there are so uh, keep an eye out for that video if you're interested um, there's no way they could have done an atmos for this um, there just isn't enough audio there they would have had to basically almost create some new um surround sound for it um but like i said the the scene with the doors um and the banging um that was clear uh sound effects added that's not from the set that's um you know those sounds have been created and then put into the mix of the movie um so that's why they're able to steer them much more easily um, but like I said, most of the dialogue sound, most of the sound of, uh, you hear on, on the set is from the set, I'm pretty sure. Um, again, anyone out there in the know, let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to keep my uh, lovely Pathé DVD version of Dog Soldiers because you may know I kind of like to watch a good old crusty version of the film occasionally. Um, just kind of, kind of gives you that nostalgic experience of, um, you know, when I used to watch this. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to um, being as lucky as you guys with 4K setups and seeing this in its full potential with the HDR um, and just seeing the picture in its full glory. Uh, on my um, plasma screen, uh, it looks absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, so much detail, uh, so much clarity, um, a really nice contrast and as I said a lovely colour palette. Um, you know, the black areas were black where they were meant to be and the light areas were pretty bright. So um, obviously the 4K will just accentuate those, the black areas will be even blacker and um, the light areas will be, you know, things like car headlights and um, shiny bits um, will be brighter you know HDR is not about um, sort of better daylight and and darker nights in, in a sense um, you've probably got more low lights in a picture so something like this um, and the next film we're going to talk about um, may look darker in 4k with the HDR because there's more darkness to sort of expose um that's why it looks overall darker but um you know viewed in a nice dark room um with your tv settings correct <laughs> um it should look fine but i was mega pleased with how this looked and really enjoyed the film so what's the other one john um john sean pertwee um in and uh that also came out recently on 4K, and that is Event Horizon. Um, so, again, I obviously had to watch the Blu-ray version of this, um, but 
unlike I think the US skew of this where it looks like they've used the um, Paramount Blu-ray release for the Blu-ray in their set um, it was noted um, on I saw this on uh, I have a DVD I'm going to show you in a second um, of uh, Event Horizon and the picture was all ever so slightly stretched so um, they all look very skinny um, because their heads have been stretched slightly and, and anything round was actually oval um, and so that was basically the incorrect aspect ratio um, but that's been corrected for the 4k now if the blu-ray in this set was of the old um, Paramount blu-ray or even I think it's the Shout Factory one um, then the aspect ratio would have also been incorrect but this has been corrected so I think the blu-ray in this is from exactly the same master that the 4k was made from um, so again even though I've watched the blu-ray I've seen the same um, picture that you guys watching the 4k have seen um, so it had been a long long time since I'd seen this um, and I have been holding off um, it's a brilliant brilliant film I was looking at the score that I gave it uh, on my blu-ray.com app from my DVD and that was 10 now watching this last night it must have been my mood but I did not enjoy it quite as much as I have done in the past now some of it I think is almost there's too much picture it's, it's almost too bright it's it's too clear it's too um it's lost on the blu-ray anyway so i know there's been reports of the 4k being pretty dark now i'm actually looking forward to that because as i said i think there's too much um sort of ambient light in a lot of the shots on the on the blu-ray so there's too much information to look at um and i think i was concentrating more on sort of wow this picture looks amazing i can't believe this was shot x amount of years ago was it 25 years ago um and you know seeing it on uh my home tv after watching the dvd oh excuse me i think i was distracted by that um rather than enjoying the film um yeah all the key elements and of the film still wowed me and um you know justin going into the um the airlock and um uh or it's fishburne's character having to sort of save him and getting in and, and everything that happens to him and um you know that was always pretty frightening and um uh tj kind of um yeah whatever ha what happens to him <laughs> That, that's pretty gruesome um you know all those scenes they're amazing scenes um but somehow the ship seemed a bit sort of smaller to me um so maybe it's a case of when you watch it on dvd back in the day on a small screen you you sort of get the size but on this sort of um you know that's a 50 inch tv i'm watching it on but maybe it, it just doesn't do the size of the ship justice now they took over most of the sound stages at Pima Studios to create this movie. Um, so, and most of those sets were basically 360 sets, i.e. meaning the camera could point anywhere and it would see set, um, not uh, crew and extras and uh, or whatever. Um, so it was a mammoth undertaking for Pima Studios uh, and all the crews and um, cast there to make this film. Um, uh, I've yet to re-watch any of the bonus material uh, on this, but um, I, do, I think I read that in, um, I read it somewhere, or I watched it somewhere, that uh, yeah, they took over so much of Pima Studios to do it. But, um, so, if I bought this lovely box set, what did I have before? Well... I had this <laughs> there we go this amazing um, amazing DVD box set and uh, yeah the back's kind of got some detail to it as well 
obviously it's missing a large portion of the ship <laughs> but um you know that's where the, the little window would be for the bridge not easiest thing to get into this but then they've even got the um the the gore and stuff that splatter all over the insides of the ship um and the dvd I was about to say blu-ray then the dvd um is housed in this rather nice sort of cd cd digi pack um and uh let's get this open for you there's some more imagery from the movie and there's your discs so it's got a bonus disc um so obviously the main feature and it does have dts so um again it had the best sound at the time um and uh yeah so i actually after i watched the the blu-ray version I put this on and some of that sort of atmosphere that I was missing um, was there because it was a bit darker, a bit dingier. Um, and, you know, the resolution it wasn't being, uh, I suppose, because obviously I'm used to watching this this version. Um, so that sort of nostalgia came back a little bit. But, um, you know, again, if I'm in a crusty mood, I'll watch this version, although sadly, I do have, I don't know if you can see, disc rot. Um, well, there's no, no, actually, let me take these discs off and you can see the, all the images that are there. So, and of course, like CD Digi packs, there is also a booklet. Um, just like a CD booklet, but uh, for DVDs. Oh, you know what? I think I read it in here. <laughs> there we go. That's how bad my brain is sometimes. Um, where? Did it say that? Um, oh, I want to read it out to you. Uh, come on, the heart of the ship. Sorry, can't find it. Um, I don't want to spend too long looking for that. But uh, yes, that was just a bit about the, um, I think it was nine, nine sound stages they used to create uh, all the sets and everything. For um, So as you know, I also collect soundtracks. So there we go, I have the soundtrack as well to Event Horizon. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got, some score on there um but of course you've got um the prodigy and uh oh what was the other there was another band um that did some music for the end but uh that's it orbital read the uh <laughs> read the thing at the top trevor come on get this in focus So there we go, two amazing movies, um, one being totally British and one basically made in Britain, um, but you know, with a mixed cast and uh, it was a great cast, um, very well put together, the chemistry and everything worked really well. Um, one thing I definitely noticed going back to the DVD was, um, so right at the very end when, um, Oh, why can't I remember character names? But the the black character, um, the one that says, um, you know, forget it, Trev. Your brain's not working properly. Any, 
um, when he's helping um, the the female, the blonde-haired woman, out of the uh, stasis chamber at the end, um, on the Blu-ray, he looked really sort of shiny and sweaty and wet because obviously he was. But on the DVD, it was slightly duller looking. Um, so, yeah, there was some very palpable differences between what I remember of the DVD and uh, and the Blu-ray, but would love to see the 4K. So before I waffle on too long and um, make a fall out of myself by forgetting half of what I'm talking about, <laughs> um, hope you like that video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this and leave a comment. Uh, Correct me with anything. Give me the character names that I'm trying to think of. Um, <laughs> I can just read them myself, but you know. Um, and uh, take it easy, and I'll see you soon in the next video.